on the phones here and check in with our inside man on the Governor's uh, Physicians Advisory Council, Dr. Hoa. Good morning, Doc. Uh, good morning, Doc. Oh, can good you morning. turn down the radio and speak up a little bit? Okay, hold on one second. I know you like hearing me loud. Uh, You're not the only one. I enjoy it, too. Can you guys hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Wednesday, we're just thinking, was there a Physicians Advisory uh, Group meeting last night? Uh, we, yeah, we have a, a kind of a short one, or a middle one last night. So, And uh, basically, um, you know, we should um, be uh, finalized and have a, um, a new travel guideline uh, for um, our residents that return to Guam. So it's, um, it should be at the governor's desk uh, with the blessing of uh, public health and everyone on the governor's advisory board last night. So uh, we, well, I think we come to a final conclusion of uh, uh, to put this plan on implementation sometime uh, later this week or early next week. Is this the uh, recommendation you've been talking about, about returning Guam residents? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so just just so if people aren't aware, so the the proposal was that returning Guam residents, uh, if they were coming from the CMI or the U.S. mainland, that they would be allowed to do home quarantine, and is that based on whether or not they received a uh, a test and uh, it came yes. negative? Yeah, this basically uh, is um we have no test involvement here. Okay. Uh, basically, what we do is that any returning resident. Um, you know, from from the mainland, from the U.S., and uh, even from uh, Japan and the Philippines that come in, is this our return resident? You know, uh, they have to sign a waiver form um, that uh, know that the acknowledgement form that know that they will be home quarantined for the full 14 days. Um, you know, and at home, and if only if they are asymptomatic. Uh, if they're symptomatic, they, they will be quarantined and uh, basically be tested for it. But uh, for the full 14 days, they, sh- they should be at home. Uh, the only place that they can go is medical appointment. They need to be for emergency, but they should not be allowed to wander in the community for the full 14 days. Okay, so again, you don't need to, to uh, meet that requirement for... Uh, that 72 hour uh, negative test result. You, if you're no. returning. Well, they, they don't need to. Uh, Sabrina, just the reason is, you know, for, uh, number one, it's very hard to uh, get the COVID testing in the state and uh, any other country. It costs a lot, it's not free, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and you have to make an appointment and the resort doesn't get back until, you know, three, four, five days later. Mm-hmm. So they're going to miss that window. And, and it's really. From the comment that we have from the for the return resident, it's almost impossible for anyone in the state to be tested. Correct. Um, so we you know, and it doesn't make sense if you are sitting in a plane full of people that probably don't have the test. Uh, so you know you're going to be exposed anyway. So uh, the logic thing is that just uh, have them quarantine at home, and um, they have to sign a form. They acknowledge that, and then. Um, if any symptoms, they can come to a clinic or public health to be tested. What do you uh, think? So um, the, how, do, how do you think the governor is going to react to this recommendation from her uh, physicians advisory council? Uh, you know, this is an effort uh, between the government advisory board and public health uh, and CDC. So it's it's, it's all a, on, on agreement. So you know, the governor would, would like it. You know, it's a lot less uh, headache to deal with um, all the complaints we have so far on the hotel quarantine. Um, again, and so um, the only one that we bear burden to cost is the, the people of Guam that um, when they return, if they see that their house is not conducive of uh, where they have to stay in there, but it's too crowded, then they stay at the hotel at their wish. Um, and they're going to pay for it. But other people that are not from Guam, uh, they the one that will pick up the bill and not go Guam. Right. right. So you it's, it's, it's very friendly uh, mm-hmm. for, for our return residents, especially during the summer when the college kids come in home. Oh, yeah. Uh, for, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot easier for them to be quarantined at home. Uh, Doc, what, what would you say, though, to the people who uh, like the governor, because I think she's mentioned this in her press conferences, but people, uh, to people who say that this has been working and this is why 
we're in PCOR 2 is because we've been able to slam these people in the, uh, you know, different quarantine facilities for two weeks, and we know they're there. We know they're not running all around the island. I mean, I, I'd get both sides, and I'm just curious what you would say to, uh, because there are people who think of that. Yeah, you know, there's, there's always people that are going to come in, and I think we have out of uh, how many thousand that we have, which I think we have like nine or ten cases that they pick up uh, in the hotel. And those are people that become symptomatic and uh, the, and they check because they're symptomatic. You know, but people in a hotel doesn't mean that you're going to check on them uh, with the testing. You know, they only test if you become symptomatic. So you, know, you have coughing or you know, congestion or you have loss of taste or abdominal pain. You know, those uh, get identified and, um, and then public health will test them. And it's the same thing at home. You know, I mean, uh, people know there's a long list of things there that if they have the symptoms, that they will call you know, from any clinic or public health to be tested. Um, I, I think the, the people of Guam are very responsible. Uh, that's how uh, we get to where we are. You know, people you know does listen. They do stay home. You know, the majority of them stay home, and they don't go nowhere. You know, when um, when they declare emergency in China, and the governor asks them to stay home, so we are not where we are unless the people, everyone on this island, follow the rule. And I think the 99.9% of the time they are following the rule. So um, with the, with that's what the system that in place in every country around here. You know, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, they all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at first we have to be very strict to uh, use a hotel quarantine to close the gate. But mm -hmm. I think that now that we know much more about it, we need to kind of relax and let our people come home. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that, right, I, yeah. I, but you guys have been talking about this, and I think you presented it to the Physicians mm -hmm. Advisory Group, presented this to the governor three weeks ago. And, and yet we have uh, been waiting for her to make a final decision. Do you know what has been the holdup? Uh, so it's, it's not a holdup, Sabrina. I mean, it's a major change from our current policy. Mm -hmm. And it really needs to be thoroughly discussed with when the advisory board, um, public health, and CDC. You know, mm -hmm. we have to, and it's not, you know, uh, it's not all we wanted, um, but we get the base one. We passed something. Uh, no, and, and as things uh, improve, we continue to modify these things. Mm -hmm. But at, at least at first now, that number one, that we get our people home for quarantine, and number two is that uh, we kind of come to a conclusion that, hey, if they are home in quarantine, um, we're not going to test them if they're asymptomatic, and if they have symptoms, they come in. You know, so um, it's a lot of talk back and forth, and um, it's not the governor, it's just a three bodies just have to sit down and kind of harsh everything out in, in order to put this thing in place. So I think we're comfortable uh, where we are. So um, again, you know, um, yesterday, probably the final meeting for that one is in Sugar Club, the government sometime this week. All right. Um, what I, can you... Now, I wanted to ask, uh, since we are on the subject of quarantine facilities, have you heard what was the reason for 60... More than 60 passengers to be moved from Hotel Santa Fe to um, another quarant government quarantine facility at the Ocean View uh, Garden Residence? Um, I think every place of that our residents uh, stay should be um, somewhat um, up to certain standard. Uh, if they're not a certain standard, then um, public health will ask them to be moved. Um, in the protection of the people that get quarantined there. Mm. You know, so that's the reason why they get moved. Because I guess the, the room at Santa Fe is not adequate, so they have to move somewhere where it's more um, uh, up to the standard uh, for, for the people to get quarantined there. Wow. So we went ahead and signed a contract for a a hotel that was not meeting standards for quarantine? You know, uh, that's something that I don't know what the um, um, the policy and procedure is, but... Uh, I don't think anybody time. knows at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or is there one? I mean, uh, what I understand is that uh, <laughs> if they find out something that is not correct, yeah, it's a, 
it's up to, it's, it's, it take a lot to move people, but at least they will not leave people where uh, yeah. they feel that it's not um, done correctly. Correct. So, you yeah. know, whoever yeah. makes that decision. Well, I th- will, I understand. There's like a walkthrough uh, uh-huh. to check it out before signing on the dotted line. Yeah. So maybe um, it was a quick walkthrough. They're yeah, like, only walk in this part. And walk like, through yeah. blindfolded. I mean, <laughs> what the yeah. hell? I mean, but, you know, um, I guess I guess on the <laughs> other side of it, Bree, is that, you know, we had Pacific Star, which clearly was inadequate from the pictures that we saw, yet they continue to just ride that deal into the dirt. Yeah, I, I think that uh, as people stay where the hotel is, that they will find out more and more on the real detail that is, is there you know, up to standard and not up to standard once the people stay there, you know? Right, yeah. So, but like I say, it takes um, a, from a big person to kind of make the decision to move because they know, they know they're going to get some criticism out of it, but they did move for the people, so uh, that's a good point. Right on. Uh, mm-hmm. Doc? Yeah, so, yes. Are you good on the quarantine? Because I want to ask about the... Yeah, payments, the payments for the tier two clinic. So we haven't followed up with you. I did. <laughs> I did get a FOIA of emails, mm-hmm. and I know that when I had asked the governor about this in the press conference, she said that they had. They. Ha- she said how I work is if I get an invoice, I pay it, and so I FOIA the emails between the governor's office and the tier two clinic representatives, and I thought I saw an invoice in there, but. You know, it was just one. So can you tell us, uh, because we're, we're kind of going down the line and we're going to get um, a doctor representing another group of clinics or a clinic uh, tomorrow on the show and find out where they're at with uh, getting paid. So where are you guys at at AMC in terms of getting uh, paid? You guys were designated Tier 2 clinics by the governor. Yeah, you know, the um, AMC, FHP, and SDA, we move in one direction. You know, so uh, um, we will not um, turn anything in unless they're the two turn it in. Okay. You know, well, we have to be fair to own three because they all uh, did the same thing and sacrificed a lot for those. So, uh, so far, you know, the, I know um, physician wise, we just work, but uh, there's a, um, you know, our admin side of the house, uh, they are trying to work with the AG office and try to finalize some type of contract in order for, uh, for us to turn in what they we should turn in so uh you know so that side of the house uh, is working on it um so so far we have not turned in anything because uh, we don't have any contract for saying with some i'm not you know i don't know the legality of it we just want to do everything by the book uh so well that, i think if way, it's being you know. paid with federal monies right mm-hmm. you, you right. don't need uh-huh. one what was that uh, last week? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Christina, but How come all of a sudden we need a contract? We didn't need a contract <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to pay anybody else, and now it's like, oh, now we need a contract, guys. Hold on. <laughs> oh, man, how much is the bill? Oh, yeah, we need a contract. Is that yeah, what it is, Doc? Are they just taking you guys for a ride? Because that's what it seems like. Yeah, but, uh, you know, eventually um, we do an okay. Um, and, and, again, I think eventually... Well, whatever MO you have a contract or whatever term will come out, but the administrator of the house is there. And all the paperwork is in there, the AG office. Uh, and um, again, we put all our expense on the side, just like SN and FHP, to categorize what we use. Yeah, so actually, Doc, you're right. Um, I just was going through this email. It wasn't an invoice that I saw. It was a recent summary of um, one of the clinic's expenses from March 17th to April 25th which consists of $955,562. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, is that about what you guys have, have incurred too, Doc? A million? Um, I don't think it's that, that high. You know, I, again, you know, our, our policy and our marching order is we just turn in the cost only mm. uh, with expense and nothing else beyond that to, for any profit margin. Uh, so I, I think that's really, really high. So I don't think that's just our invoice. Can you just back this up? You said a marching order. Who gave you that marching order? Um, you know, well, Dr. Akimoto and myself gave the marching order for the admin side of the house because we want to clearly want to let the admin side of the house uh, know that we just turn in the expense that it's, it's uh, that we incur for the for the uh, tier two. 
but nothing else beyond that. You know, so if it's a cost for me to pay my uh, my supply and my staff, that's all we're going to turn in. These right. you know, these tier two clinics did did you guys volunteer to be tier two clinics, hmm. or was this uh, the governor uh, flexing her public health authority powers, powers and you, taking you know, over the, the clinics? Before she did the tier two, the acute um, care, you know, the care team. You know, we you know, we have a discussion with the governor, and it's it's a it's a two sided agreement that we do that. You know, we know that if we don't step up and do this thing, you know, uh, GMHER and GMC more likely will not be where they are at this point. Um, so we step up, and and she agreed to basically um, determine that she's gonna use the 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 three clinics as a tier two. So. It's a mutual agreement um, uh, between the two, and she didn't really don't want to exercise the um, you know the take over the two clinics. It's an agreement between the two parties, so uh, I wouldn't put that blame on her. You know, it's um we we step up. We didn't know the how long it's going to take. <laughs> mm. You know, it starts about two three weeks, but we didn't know it's going to last for several months. Mm. You know, that's where it uh, really um, you go beyond our. Um, our expense when we kind of burn off all our, um, our you know, um, uh, ra- uh, rainy day um, uh, savings. So that's the thing. Well, rainy so season's a, coming, Doc. A, a mutual verbal agreement. Yeah, I, I would say that. You know, mm-hmm. she, I don't think that... Um, An MVA. Uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, something that she... Uh, I don't think the government wants to say that they take mm-hmm. over somebody, you know. Right, but then wouldn't other clinics that m- maybe we wanted to help, wouldn't they feel... Um, left out or, or wouldn't have been able to would have been able to help you know Sabrina um, Chris, it's at the beginning when the day one I, I think um, um, in fairness to own the clinic you know m- most of the clinic kind of shut down the service just because no one know what's going on with this one you know no nobody in the war knows so we learn things every day you know so um, as a bigger clinic we have more manpower right, and yeah. And the structure of the clinic, we can isolate the patient right. in a certain way to, to let not, you know, when the patient walks in, you're not going to infect everybody. You know, as you can aware that if you have a one clinic person, you have one waiting area. Right. I mean, they, entrance, they just picked the three entrance. biggest clinics, basically, mm-hmm. right? right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And basically, the three biggest clinics, the way they design, we can isolate the patient in right. a certain uh, area. Because you got a lot of secret rooms. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So... Uh, so we have a lot of the, the place that we have multiple entrance, multiple exits, so that way it's much safer environment Got for it. us to handle the patient. We had a yeah. comment here, Doc, um, from Mary Jane. She writes, the governor said, I'm taking over, I have the power. And, of course, referencing that clip that we played last week uh, with the governor speaking before the Medical Association. Yeah, you know, the, we we know she say that, but uh, I don't think in whole heart that, uh, that uh, she actually will... Uh, know that she was tech over with no saying from you. No, they did ask. Okay, okay. You know, they so. asked before they took over. <laughs> yeah, so hey, they, can they I take you ask. over? And then give agree? You, hard, hard, you agree? Hard you agree? time about okay. getting paid. <laughs> right on. Okay. And 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 and, and, and uh, like I say, you know, at that time, you know, uh, with everything going on, you know, we're gonna step up. AM, you know, AMC, SD, 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 they all step up. Right. You know, and uh, like I say, when, uh, again. The amnesty the house are working on it. We uh, we don't know. So this is the first time ever in our history that we deal with this thing. So uh, with anything else in the in the public regarding you know from for Cuba everything, we just want to do by the book. <laughs> you know, so we do not get criticized on this one. You got to do by. Oh, the you book. better be nice if you want to get paid now, Doc. You I'm know, gonna give you the floor. Uh, do you want to say anything nice about the administration while they're um, listening? You know, I think the, everything is after the fact, um, uh, but um, no, wrong or right, the people of Guam and this island are doing very well uh, no, compared to anywhere in the United States. Uh, I think that right now the only thing that we do is the governor will open out you know, everything for our economy to get back with the tourism, uh, and so we get our people back who have a, a job right now. So. You know, we don't have that big curve like uh, we project before, uh, but um, 
like I say, a disaster because the tech owner effort people in Guam and uh, getting where we are at this point. Nice. So I think that the people um, can be proud of themselves. Uh, the governors, um, I guess, the, everything else you read in the world is the same. The transparency things and the, everything needs to be in place for the people to understand more where on the front are. And Guam is not unique. You, you can hear that anywhere else in the world, too, in the United States. Um, so I, I think there's a very big challenge for someone at the head. Uh, I don't think that any governor will uh, be uh, happy to sit in that seat at this point. Physical is so unique. The rest of your life, you will never see one like this again, I hope. All right. So. Mm-hmm. Well, Doc, uh, thank you. I don't know if that was really positive, but we'll take it. I'm an, uh, duly noted. <laughs> duly noted. I'm going to send the broadcast over to Adeloupe. Uh, thank you, Chris. W- and Sabrina. Was, was there anything else uh, that you guys discussed at the Physicians Advisory Group meeting last night? Uh, we discussed a bit more about um, the tourism and how to get them back. You know, we need to really start planning uh, in the very near future to try to get them back. And also, Dr. Chair, is uh, our uh, rising passenger board, and, and with his experience, we hope that he can work with Taiwan, Korea, and Japan to get the tourists to come in you know, as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. What about, uh, was there any discussion on um, the uh, dine-in, re- for dine-in services for restaurants and, and whether or oh, not there's any yeah. uh, movement to restore that? We say open it. <laughs> oh, you guys oh, told the governor that? Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we told my crews to tell the governor open it, you know, so <laughs> we can open it so we can go out and eat, you know. With, so the, the restaurant have their own guideline already. They mm-hmm. they have very strict guidelines that protect the, the, the customer. So I think that as long as we are where we are right now with the number of counts every day, um, uh, yeah, open it. So, so let's see, let's say the economy start to get back so the tourists know that, hey, it's safe to come to Guam. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, well, I'm sorry. One other thing, that the uh-huh. public health SIT report, I noticed something new on uh, how they're pushing out the information, and now it, it indicates a serology. So how, how long and, and when did we start doing a serology test? And just for our, our listeners if and, and viewers, if you can explain just... Uh, in layman's terms, the difference between serology and the PCR test? You know, as um, this serology test is, is something kind of a little bit different because the, pa- the patient presentation, you know, uh, uh, the patient has multiple uh, very severe chronic illness uh, and just like congestion heart failure, you know, and, and you know, when they come in from complain of shortening of breath and, you know, uh, the picture look like they have COVID on the x-ray and CT with presentation uh, is also correlates to congestion heart failure so I mean they go back and forth in the two and when you treat the congestion heart failure they they feel better and, and uh, they go home and then uh, they go home the congestion heart come back so the, the PCR test is negative uh, so you no know, they decide to run the serology test and serology is positive it means that the patient might not have COVID at this point. It might have a long time ago that serology is positive. You know, uh, so the PCR is pick up the molecular or the part of the virus or the particle of the virus. Um, both of them are negative, you know, so they run multiple tests. So more likely uh, in your mind, the patient is positive, but quite a while, way, you no, know, um, several weeks back. Uh, that um, that he has not seen anyone, and so uh, they hope they're going to count as positive because the serology, the antibody is positive. So you know that the guy had infection before, but he might not be infectious now. Uh, but he present in a different way, like congestive heart failure. So as far as I can tell you, without going anything else on it. So what happened is that the PCR testing is they pick up the particle or the virus itself, okay? So when you have a person that is positive, positive and symptomatic um, and the PCR is positive, and after 14 days or, or two or three weeks, um, they don't have any symptom anymore. But if you retest them, it would be positive again. Maybe because we not pick up the virus, we so pick up the particle in the virus, it's gone already. They're not infectious anymore. 
but we still pick them up because we pick up the pieces of the virus. Okay, so the antibody, the serology, it basically your body form a protection from this virus, so it can pick up, you know, either an acute what we call an IgM in that um, about 11, 10, 14 days after the infection, you pick that up to tell you that it's just a recent infection. And then the other one is the IgG. It's a chronic infection. That means that you know the person is no longer infectious anymore, but in the past sometimes they are infected. No, they have infection in the past. Doc, no, what about uh, we received a, a, a tip that a person who had uh, had COVID passed, but not from COVID. Do you know about this? What can you tell us about that? And then... Um, what do you mean by pass? Like passed away. Yeah, died. Uh, you know, there's always, everyone that passed away will be tested for COVID. Uh, that's 100%. You know, uh, and so far... I'm sorry, everybody that passed away? Uh, everyone that passed away, they will be tested for COVID-19. And so far as I know, uh, there's no one that turned positive that passed away um, at home. No, no, no. no, no it's no, no, someone no, no, no. That, yeah. that recovered. Uh, someone that recovered. And was fine. Um, yeah, was fine. You know, it's, um, that's, that's, the, that's the wonderful part about it. Someone who recover is fine and they, then they die. Yeah. That's not considered a COVID case, right? No, nah, it's not considered a COVID case. If, if they... Um, you know, if they they remember most of the people that is really positive symptomatic, they have other complications and comorbidity for mm -hmm. this. Um, you know, uh, if you're a young person and yourself, it's very hard for you to pass away. And then look at all the five people that passed away; they all are elderly with multiple comorbidity. Right. You know, so uh, for your the, the people in your age group, you know, they, they the young people, to, right? They, yeah, yeah, they're not gonna pass away very rarely. You know, so. Um, that's that's not probably not the reason. Okay, Doc. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Wash your hands, Doc. I'm gonna have to uh, re-listen to what you said because I'm not sure I understood the difference. You lost uh, me at serology. <laughs> okay. I was not, like, I no, post, not the serology me. question. <laughs> <laughs> this call me personally. I explain to you. I right. Do you have okay. any illustrations? Can we get Doctor McGlotney to maybe do like a nice chart? <laughs> oh, we could do a flow sheet for Yeah, you. <laughs> make it easy, Doc. Okay, Doc, we got to go. Okay. okay. Wash your hands. Guys. Take care. Okay, okay. see bye you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. All right, 739, uh, Dr. Hoa. Uh, always great to have him on the program. We're going to take a really quick break, and then uh, I want to bring in a woman who is basically asking questions about us reopening the island and telling people to go back to work, but not providing the opportunity for them to have child care to do that. And I, I, this is something I keep hearing about from people who uh, maybe for whatever reason they can go back to work. Well, you remember early on, Dr. Felix Cabrera actually brought this issue up. Right, yeah. That there, you know, if you, c if you have family members that can help because they need nurses to come in to work and right. healthcare professionals. And so. the daycares have, have been closed. Yeah. So we're going to um, talk to a lady who's uh, kind of, you know, making some noise about it and then uh, talk to a daycare owner and find out. Uh, where we are in terms of reopening that I think it's essential I mean if we're gonna uh, tell people to go back to work and get back to normal